from team, I'm Madison McGregor, and this is My Time with Madison. Today we're talking about how a lot of things in life right now feel out of control. Marine educator, ocean adventurer, and storyteller, Megan Haney Greer. On the home front, it's like when you're still working from home and you're doing all this and you're contending with the psychological part of it, you know, in, in the mental health realm and just keeping yourself and your kiddos on track and, and all of that. It's just, it's a lot. And so I think, you know, it's, it's a lot, but it's good at the same yeah. time. It's a new experience. So. Yeah. You seem to really be embracing it beautifully as always. So. Oh, thanks. I'm trying, you know, I, I have my moments. It's it. I feel like this a lot of days where I'm like, ah, oh. and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I got this. I can like, I can conquer all this myself, you know? And so it's like, uh, it's funny because I was thinking about that, uh, when I was, you know, just getting my head in the space for us, for our chat. And I was like, I was thinking about that pendulum effect and I've, I've spoken with some friends and some family about this too, but where you go through these different experiences in life and it's, and I mean, this is no different. This is a case in point, but it's mm -hmm. like you swing way far over here and then you swing way far over here, you know, and they're like polar opposites. And then it's just, it's all about getting back to that empowered middle ground, you know, where it's like, you can actually, function and and make choices and rational decisions and you're you know you can you can adult there <laughs> so so that's that's the challenge absolutely and how are you um doing it like what are the specific things that you're noticing that are really helping you at this time oh man well so like i said it's definitely it, this has really forced me to exercise my my uh coping and resiliency muscles as well um i have been trying really hard to get creative i have taken this opportunity to really be present like like really you know this is something it, it almost is cliche like be present in the moment mm -hmm. and, and all of that and i this is turn that on its ear. Um, <laughs> if we, if we ever have had a moment where collectively to, you know, be pre actually be present in the moment, like past is gone. Like, you know, even, even all the steeping in that, you know, with, uh, with what's going on with, with uh, the process of how all the governments are handling it or how we could have done it different. It's like past, done, boom. We can learn from that, but on the day-to-day -day, sitting and steeping in that is just so toxic, I think. And so I've been really trying to focus on the moment and the fact that there are so many unknowns really make it an interesting process and exercise because you can't plan anything. I mean, you can, you can definitely plan and say, okay, this is what I want to do, or this is where I want to go. But, but it can also end up back backfiring a little bit on you because I I've kind of, I've tried that as well where I'm like, okay, so when this is over, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get this going and I'm going to do that. But the ripple effects are so far reaching that we don't really know what different industries and our abilities to travel and all that stuff is going to look like on the other mm -hmm. side of this. So at that point, I, you know, it, it dawned on me where I was like, this is the moment to be in the moment. <laughs> and it, it like embrace everything that means, you know, from your own, from your own self care, finding joy and keep laughing. Oh my God, that has been so huge for me. And I've just been trying to, because that, that allows you to keep things light you know, and, and I think that that is so important. And that's, so that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to be really present in the moment, like, but redefining that in, so like a totally different outlook from what I used to think that meant and finding joy and laughing 
like as much as I can. Sometimes we'll just bust out. That the other thing is like is keep my body moving because it's really easy to just like not want to get up in the morning and pull the covers over my head and be like, no, like I just want this to go away and change. And it's like, okay, wait a minute. I I love um Mel Robbins and and uh you know I kind of she wrote the five second rule and it's yeah. about like you know the five four three two one and launch and I've been doing that to get up out of bed in the morning no lie total transparency there but like sometimes to keep moving so my son and I who's seven uh we've been working out um on some of the virtual workouts that are available with my um awesome personal trainer friend down in Miami <laughs> Z uh she's got Z Fit and then um uh, my gym here, there's just so many great resources, but they've been posting live stuff every day as well. So you can either join live or do that. And sometimes we'll just bust out um, in uh, dance parties, just my son and me, and we'll just crank the music up. He's like, mom, dance party, you know, and we'll, we'll do that. And it, it's so good to just let that release, you know, and, and that pent up energy and stress and all of that. And, um, and I'll tell you what, one of the biggest things that has been getting me through the day to day is when I'm starting to kind of feel like really fatigued with all of it. And I, I joke around, you know, where I, I'll be like, I'll reach out to a friend or something and I'm like, Oh man, I'm circling the drain. I got to pull myself out of this and like reboot, you know, and I will, um, it's so, uh, invig like energizing and inspiring for me to, um, find a way to be kind to somebody else and whatever that means. So yesterday, um, it was, it was just a tough day for me for a few different reasons and stuff I was juggling. And it was like, that's it. I got to get out of here. I'm going to go get out in nature. Uh, we're still allowed to do that right now here in Colorado, which I'm super grateful for. Uh, but even just getting out in the grass in the backyard or whatever is available is so beneficial to reconnect with nature and the, you know, and the environment in any way. And I went out for a walk yesterday and I always have my mask on and things like that. And from across the street, there were some other people walking and just even saying hello and engaging in a conversation, you know, from 20 feet away of like, <laughs> how are you? And I don't know these people, you know, but that extension of kindness and you can just see like the stress we're all carrying and you can see that like melt away. Like some people look at you like you're little, you know, like. <laughs> why are you talking to me? And then other people though, are just, you can see that melt away for a second. They're like, Oh, hi. You know, and we're all, uh, I think so grateful to just connect right now. And, and that's super important. So, yeah, so that's me. That's kind of what I've been doing to navigate best I can in this strange circumstance. <clears throat> and before, um, <clears throat> it sounds like your perspective on being present has changed so much, mm -hmm. um, back to that. And, how, like, what was it like before and what is it like now? And what does it feel like for you with that change, despite everything that's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So this, it's not the first time that I've, I've worked to change my perspective on being present in that way. And I'll give you a couple examples. So it's just almost like a, a rediscovery of that for me. We're, while it's still different because I'm older, I'd like to think I'm wiser at this point, but you know, I, um, back when I first started, when I graduated from high school and was, uh, going out in the field a lot, uh, for extended periods of periods of time out on boats, um, and not, you know, seeing land for a long time or going back to land for a long time. And this was, you know, way before cell phones. I'm going to date myself there. But uh, there was no connection when you leave, you know, and, um, or going out uh, in the field uh, with a different animal research and documentation we were doing. Um, being out in the field and the work that I've done in the past um, with predators like alligators, sharks, um, different you know, marine wildlife and also my free diving back when I used to be competitive in free diving, all of those things really require you to be in the moment mm -hmm. to where it's, it becomes literally a life or death situation in many cases. And so it's not an unfamiliar feeling for me, but this is the first time, of course, any of us, um, in the last hundred plus years are experiencing, a, you know, a lockdown or anything of this nature due to a global pandemic. So I've been 
drawing on some of those experiences and skills that I've had previously and trying to implement them here. I mean, obvious differences where those I'm out in the field and free diving and, you know, every day is a new adventure and something exciting going on. And here it's like, we're staying home. This we're just over five weeks now of self-isolation, but you know, it's such a, so it looks really different actually like visually looks really different, but a lot of the feelings and a lot of wrapping my head around it is really similar. And Usually in the past when I was out on expeditions and, and doing that on a regular basis, you know, it's those team dynamics and you're working with your, your, you know, secluded with these people that you have to navigate and the personalities and all of this stuff. But here, when you are so isolated, uh, the di a big difference there is like, I've taken the opportunity to get to know my neighbors really well from a safe distance, but it's been amazing. I, that is something that I experienced too in the Keys. I grew up in the Florida Keys. And so um, when we would go through a, a hurricane, I've been through many hurricanes and weathered the storm there. And then you're kind of, you know, isolated from the rest of the world for a short period of time. And obviously different dynamics where we can get together after and have, you know, barbecues and invite neighbors and stuff when your freezer craps out on you, you have to eat everything in the freezer. But it's, it's got a similar vibe to it where, you know, I've, I moved this last summer to a new place and didn't know any of my neighbors, of course, when I moved in and, and since, and I'd said hi to people out and around um, in the yard or the driveways and stuff like that. But this has really changed the dynamics. It's like, we're all experiencing in, uh, a very unique experience, like an acute trauma and in a way, and you build those bonds, um, in a unique way. I think, you know, we, on some different expeditions that I've been on in really, really dangerous environments where I'm, you know, still kind of in awe. There were, there wasn't like a casualty while we were out there because it was extreme environments and circumstances. Um, you do, you kind of, you connect with people in a different way. And I think we all have the opportunity to do that now. And that can actually be a positive that comes out of this is our ability to get creative with connecting and rewire how we approach things, uh, rewire how we're present in the moment and rethink how we get creative with our kids and our family. Um, you know, our family that we live with and also that we can't go see and, and connect with in that way. And being open to embracing these different, these different things and also letting go of those expectations. That was one of the things um, with some of the work that I've done in the past in particular, I, I spent a long time diving in the, the swamps of Southern Florida with alligators and the different snake species that live there and all of that. And this was way back uh, when I started doing that in the nineties. And, and that was not, it would, my team and I, we were out there filming and documenting these animals and it was, uh, and that more specifically like their reaction and behavior toward us in the water. And we were the first people doing this um, back in the late nineties. And it was, a different mentality back then of, of kind of a killer be killed type of mentality with predators. And it, it was uh, such an interesting time because we were documenting their behavior to demonstrate and, and basically doing this and exploring in this way to demonstrate that, Hey, you know, we, we are surviving. We're coming out of the water. We're interacting with these wild animals and they're okay. I think I don't support that mode of uh, promoting conservation anymore. I think times have changed and we've learned a lot more. It's not really a appropriate vehicle for that type of conservation messaging anymore. But another thing is, is like back then getting over a lot of the fear or um, the, what it's not, it wasn't even like I had a whole, I didn't have like a foundation of fear going in the water uh, in my teens at all, but it was more like, 
I got asked that question a lot. Like, how did you do that? Or why weren't you scared or whatever it was? And the only thing that I could really attribute it to, and I, I recall saying this in many different interviews, especially back then, was that I just didn't play the what if game. I would prepare, I would plan, I would train myself and become, and just like soak in all the knowledge I could about wherever I was going. But I wouldn't play that what if game. I wouldn't question, um, or I guess I wouldn't set up the expectations for it, you know, of what's good, what could play, what could play out and how could this happen and everything. And I just would go. And that is the, I think I, I wanted to, I started going down that rabbit hole there with that story because I think that's the essence of the being in the moment that I was talking about that I'm tapping into. Obviously I'm not here in Colorado swimming with alligators, but I am tapping into that. That's been a really, um, a good reservoir for me to tap back into, uh, right now to just cope and deal on a daily basis with this, with these unknown circumstances. Um, while still embracing that part of, of uh, being aware and knowledgeable as I can be, as, we, as any of us can be right now with these unknown circumstances, but staying in the know and understanding what's going on um, and the new discoveries that are being made with this virus and all of that, but then also going, you know, compartmentalizing in that way and saying, okay, this is what we know now. And... I can't play the what if game because it's all these unknowns and it doesn't serve you any purpose. And, um, you know, in the free diving world, if you do that, you lose all your oxygen right away. So it's, it's really interesting with, um, I'm going to get my, I have like a, a pop-up screen that just popped up. That's okay. With me. Bear with me, Madison. I'm going to get this okay. out of the way. Cause it was like covering your face. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, where'd she go? But it's really interesting. So, so I, I think that living in the moment and, and uh, in that specific way that I've been trying to kind of tease apart and unearth that the essence of what I'm talking about is the free diving example is perfect too. Like, you know, you, I would prepare and breathe and oxygenate my blood and I've trained and I've done all this stuff and, and, um, oxygenated my blood, blood just by the deep breathing, you know, you prepare on the surface and you do, you do all your preparation and all of that. And then you, you know, duck dive and you go down, you start on your journey underwater and I would be down there and it's so important to be calm and to have that presence of mind of just literally being in the moment, understanding, you know, you're, you're packing the knowledge, which knowledge is always power. You're packing the knowledge of what, you know, I, I was with my training of what I was capable of, how far I could go. Maybe I was pushing the limits that day, but that I knew I had, uh, you know, that I, I was, it was best serving me to be in the moment because as soon as I would worry or like, oh my gosh, I got to get back. Or what was that? Or I got to, I'm starting to feel like I run out of air. You instantaneously, like your mind can use so much of that oxygen just by the, the panic that you can cause. And I think in the day to day right now, staying, staying out of that zone is the most important thing. So yeah, that's what I've been <laughs> exercising on lately. I love that analogy of free diving to what we're going through right now and how that's prepared you for this moment, which is just incredible to hear. And it seems like not only the lack of expectation, but also the detachment you're able to have from those thoughts that you were having that could be very scary thoughts actually helped you survive in those life or death situations. But right now it sounds like it's really helping you as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why, you know, in particular the, the free diving and the, the alligator work that I did, you know, jumping in the water with a it's super murky swamp water the first time. And I had never been in the water with an alligator and it was like, well, here I go. I, I'm making this decision to be here, which obviously none of us just, you know, we're making the choice to be here, but every day there's, I think, you know, even in those circumstances where uh, with diving with marine predators and diving um, and doing my free dive records, I, they were all choices I made. I wanted to be there and I was, 
there was a, it was part compartmentalizing in a way as well, because part of it was within my control of what I could prepare for and what I could do and how I could wrap my head around it and, and get the knowledge and all of those things. And then the other part of it is you're dealing with the ocean, which is unpredictable. You're dealing with, I was dealing with, um, wild animals, which are really unpredictable in many ways too, especially what we were doing. Cause we were, we didn't have a roadmap to follow on any of these things and it, with free diving as well. And so we were really kind of trailblazing and, and pushing the envelope as we went. So there's, there was a lot of unknowns, which is really similar to this situation. And I, I do feel like that mentality of being able to compartmentalize those things has helped me in this moment and prepared me pretty well for this moment right now. But I, I am not, I don't feel like I'm special in that way. And I think we all have the capacity to just compartmentalize. I just have had experience doing that before in different circumstances that I've been in, but it's something that is such a, such a good brain exercise right now for all of us to do, I think. And, and really it boils down to being in the moment and knowing what you are prepared for over here and accepting these unknowns and landing here and where you can be in that, in that, uh, it's really empowering. I think to be in the moment is what I've been feeling is that I feel a lot more in control of my day. I feel more in control of my thoughts and my, uh, just, you know, my, my inner dialogue that, that I have. And it allows me to, to take better care of myself because that for me is always foundational. I think, uh, I, I don't take care of myself at the expense of anybody else, like my child or anything, but I feel like taking care of myself is the best thing I can do for my kid. And for anybody else in my life that, that depends on me and loves me and, and, you know, is, is rooting for me. I, that's, that's what I can do, uh, to make sure that I can be there and show up in the best way possible. And so that's been something I've been struggling with now. Uh, and, and you know, kind of tapping back into that, that experience and knowledge that I've had to, to pull myself back. Like, okay, yes, we're getting up out of bed. Yes. We're going to make the bed. Yes. We're going to shower and get on with the day and make a list and do these things and, and maintain that, that feeling of daily purpose while we're being present in the moment. And while we're still moving forward, I mean, we are moving forward every day and we just can't make a whole lot of plans, which, you know, brings us right back down to being in the moment and enjoying what we do have and, and finding those places to express the gratitude and all of that. It sounds like you're taking just one step at a time and just really focusing on that. And I love that so much because it can feel so overwhelming. <laughs> oh yeah. You're like, I got to, um, and even going back to like the free diving and, and um, also swimming with predators um, that seems like it, it's almost like, you know, swimming with predators is like swimming with your negative thoughts and facing that kind of helps you overcome that. And free diving is kind of just like taking it one day at a time and you keep going. Um, those like images came to mind when you were talking about that, which was very empowering to think about. And it, and it makes me hearing you talk about it, feel like you were in those situations in this situation right now, which is just like totally um empowered and um in a totally different realm of mind um at this time so that's um yeah that's just listening to that it's giving me a whole new um perspective on the current situation so thanks for that yeah <laughs> really absolutely cool. no i love i love that <laughs> connection you just drew and and on that note you know when you said swimming with the predator sharks or alligators or anything is how that's kind of like swimming with your your dark thoughts or where when you go there i mean and it's such a cool connection because 
those, uh, because I, so I work in conservation and so much of what I talk about in the public speaking I do and, and uh, my video blog I have coming up on conservation and all these things is about the connectivity of everything. And I think we're seeing that in such a new way with this pandemic and what is happening and how that is tied into the natural world and how we have, have been not taking care of it like we need to. And the, the analogy of, you know, swimming with the predators, which is like our, our, some of our dark thoughts. It's so interesting because it's, we're connected to the natural environment. So we're essentially connected to these animals and we, you know, just like we are, that our, our thoughts, our negative dark thoughts are part of us. And I, I've, uh, I've been over the last couple of years diving into a lot of that type of work where it's like looking at the patterns or the bad habits and the different things that we develop over time. And I had a lot of that personal work to do. And, you know, I've really, I love that analogy because I've really come to go to realize that all of this stuff that, might be the negativity or that, that, uh, you know, um, negative self-talk we do and things like that. They're all part of us and it doesn't really serve us to go, okay, you're out, you're done with you, you Mm. go away and cut it off. But it's like, okay, you're here, you're part of me. I'm going to embrace you and love you in that journey of learning to love ourselves. You're part of me. I'm going to keep you here, but you don't get a drive. Um, Mm. I think it's Elizabeth Gilbert had um, this great, uh, I always panic when I see people's names. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Okay. I always do that. And I'm like, it's one of my things where I'm like, did I say that wrong? Uh, So Elizabeth Gilbert has this great quote. She was talking about that with the negativity and fear. I think she was specifically addressing fear. And she was like, that my fears are part of me. And they always can come along for the ride, but they're going to sit in the back seat. They don't get to drive and they don't get to touch the radio. So it's like, you know, you get, we get to set up our boundaries with ourselves and with our negative self-talk that we have. And I think uh, this is such a great time to start really looking at what that means. And I've loved uh, just really exploring some some researchers and life coaches and public speaking public speakers that go out and talk about these things like Bernie Brown and Mel Robbins and just really seeing their perspective on it and I I love that that uh the vulnerability that they show and I've been working on a lot of that myself instead of just always kind of BSing your way through it in the public view of like on social media and stuff, it's not always great. It's not. I mean, I've had, you know, tears and highs and lows and little freak out sessions. And then it's like, okay, stop. We're going to have a dance party, you know, and my boy and I will, will rock that out or struggles with the homeschooling. And I mean, we've, we've gone through just the, you know, the full range and the hurricane of emotion and feelings. And I, I would love to think I have it together all the time, but I absolutely do not. And I am just pushing the envelope with my own boundaries now and just continue, you know, as an explorer, I'm just going to keep doing that and going forward. And so much of that is just your exploring your own uh, mental ability and, and capacity and resilience to, to stay, stay with it and stay present and keep going and know that um, I need to take good care of myself in the process. And what does that mm. mean? And how has that changed now? And addressing those things as they come up. And uh, yeah, so I think, you know, I, I think that it's really served me well. And I think it's really important for all of us to, to also feel all the feels and, and do it and embrace it. And in an age appropriate way, share that with your kids. Um, that's been really important for me anyway, because I know he's, he's seven years old and my son, and he's 
trying to process all this stuff too, you know, and I don't sit down for big long sessions with the scary news or anything, but I've been real with him in many ways of what we're dealing with and that, uh, you know, I've said, I'm like, man, mommy's not always going to get it right. This is the first time that I'm doing all this stuff too. And I'm trying it. But I, I said to him, I said, I will promise you right now though, that I'm absolutely going to keep trying my best. And that's all we, that's all any of us can do. Absolutely. And I love how you're identifying with the explorer and also nature on some level and how that brings you so much strength and peace at this time. And hearing you say that, it's like, wow, for, for me to hear that, it, 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 again, it's like a total shift in how to approach this time of exploring this chaos, really. Um, and I just, yeah, that's, that's, I, I really love how, how you're doing that and how also I, I think that that would bring a sense of calm and relax to your loved ones because then they probably feel less pressure um, to worry about you if things don't go right because they know that you got it, like in your attitude even if you don't get it right all the time, but you're doing your best. And I think that's what, what we all can do right now and, and take from for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think it's important right now to make sure we're, we're being kind to ourselves and each other and, you know, making sure that we give ourselves a hall pass when we need, you know, we don't need to, we don't need to come out of this, you know, having learned how to play an instrument and, and learn two new languages, you know, this is, this is a traumatic and, and in many ways, scary experience for all of us. And you know what, no matter what age you are and being able to embrace the the moment and the joy and the mess ups and lead with kindness and just uh you know know that we're all doing the best that we that we can right now there's um a quote that i love um by maya angelou which is a american poet and it's it's basically that um you know when you know better you can do better. And so right now we're doing the best that we can with the knowledge that we have. And when we know better, we will then do better. And I think it's important that along this, along the way throughout this process that we're being kind to ourselves in that way and forgiving ourselves for any missteps that we might've had and circling back around, you know, and being able to say that and say, Hey, I'm sorry. I, I, whether it's to a friend or on social media or to your kids or to your parents or whatever it is, but coming back around and saying, man, I am sorry. I said that, or I had that approach. I wish I would have handled it differently, but I was, you know, trying to navigate and just either was dealing with this in my life or whatever it was. And then I kind of freaked out and just being able to, to have that, um, that vulnerability and to, to lay that out and keep connecting in that way and, um, and hoping that, you know, we can forgive ourselves and each other whenever we do miss stuff <laughs> like that. Cause this is a time, this is a time for it. This is brand new for all of us and uh, we're going to make mistakes and we just, you know, can hopefully continue to learn from those and, and keep doing better. And it feels so scary to even the concept of vulnerability is terrifying. And it's, and it just from, listening to how you're cultivating it yourself, it seems like compassion and awareness kind of go hand in hand and kind of produce vulnerability for you when you're aware, like I messed up and I still love myself for it. And I'm going to talk about it. Um, it's a beautiful affirmation of just what we all need right now, which is just more compassion and awareness and vulnerability between each other. It just seems like that's how um, to cultivate it from, from, from what you've said. And, and it seems so empowering. Yeah. Well, well, I, you know, it's, I think it's an important combination of ingredients to, to weather <laughs> this storm that we're in. And I, I, and I will say, I don't like being vulnerable. I don't, <laughs> I don't even really like the word. Like I, I've been on a real journey this last year, uh, you know, just my, personal, 
work and personal challenges that I've been doing of really trying to rise to the occasion and find the courage to be vulnerable in those ways. Because you always risk being shot down or being, you know, ridiculed or belittled or bullied or whatever, whatever that is. And learning, uh, through the different things that I've been reading and listening to and, and experiencing myself as I've kind of been, you know, kind of sticking my toes in the water with it, it, it over the past couple of years of being vulnerable in those ways. It's, uh, you know, with sharing your needs or your feelings or whatever it is. Uh, it's, it's been a really interesting and empowering experience because it, it takes so much courage. It's so scary. And then I want to see if I can do it. You know, and that's, I mean, that's my mentality. That's how my brain is wired. And I, so that's how I've approached it. And it's different for everybody. I, I like, I thrive in that personal challenge. And so I've kind of made being vulnerable my personal challenge for the, especially the last year, but, but it's hard and it's scary. And at the same time, it's such, I think it's such an important ingredient in, like I said, in this recipe of what is going on right now and being able to weather this. Uh, and come out the other side stronger, um, especially mentally. I mean, once we get through this, it's like you talk about, you know, the the elasticity that we're creating in our minds to be able to to keep putting slowly this step in front of the other step, and then step step and keep going. It's this is huge resiliency we are all building in every way I can think of right now, and. You know, I, I just, uh, I, I've done things like this before, like we talked about earlier on and I just, uh, and I, I know I'm going to make it through and there's days that I don't believe that. And I tell myself that anyway. Mm. That's powerful right there. Um, and <clears throat> how do you get over some of those beliefs that you have? Like what is, is it literally just taking the action anyway, despite not feeling it? in the moment that helps? Yeah, definitely moving and taking action on anything it makes a huge difference. Because when I'm, when I'm feeling that way, it's kind of this negative self-talk, you know, like, oh my gosh, you know, how are you gonna get your work back on track? And how, what if the whole industry that I'm involved in, like, has completely changed or, you know, who, who could I lose and who, like all of these things, you know, whether it's financially related or family related or my own well-being, and, you know, tied to that and all this stuff and, and um, you know, carry it like caring for my kiddo and all these things, all this, this, you know, hornet's nest of scary thoughts and you get into the negative self-talk and you start, you know, I can start going down that rabbit hole and very pivotal for me. What I jump into right away is, uh, the joy laughing, uh, finding some way to do that, tapping back into that. And, um, kindness is huge. It's so rejuvenating for me. Any act of kindness, I'll see my neighbor out taking her, you know, I have an elder elderly neighbor that my son is really taken to and she takes her dog go and we'll just go, Hey, hi you know, we'll stick our head out the door and talk to her for a couple minutes from a very safe distance. And just, you know, she, she's reached out and said, that has meant so much to me that you guys are doing that. She's completely alone over there. And just anything like that. So the, the joy and laughing, reaching out of any kind of act of kindness and, and, uh, and moving my body, like actually getting off my butt and moving, get it, just shut the screens off especially the phone, you know, and all the apps and the social media and all this stuff, like, and then get outside, walk, move, exercise, run, you know, and I, I was struggling, uh, with the change schedule to figure out like, okay, I really need to, I like to run and I should say jog. I'm not much of a runner, but it's kind of like a jog walk. So anyway, but I love that movement. I, I love the, the rhythm of it and I need to I need it for my brain and it starts making the serotonin and all these good things fire off on your body. Right. 
And I was like, okay, so how am I going to do that? I'm not bringing my son to school and dropping him off. I, he's, you know, I'm not going to leave him at home. He's too young. So what we started doing is he's gotten more skilled on his bike this, uh, this year so far. And just even since this pandemic started and we get up and now he's asking me if we can go do it. We get up to see the sunrise. So we go up to the lake by our house and uh, safely we're wearing our masks and the buffs now and all that stuff but we get out there we watch the sunrise he rides his bike and I run and so it's it's being able to adapt and evolve in the moment as we need to and that has presented some amazing opportunities as well to speak with my son about that and how different it is it's amazing we can learn so much from kids from young people in um you know, all of you young people have so much to teach us. You seriously, like there, I think that, you know, before we get really rigid with how things are and how things should be and all of that stuff that we like lay these patterns in our brain for, you know, kids are adapting really well in many ways, like especially, you know, probably what, 12 and under, like they're adapting so well where I, you know, I, I texted a picture of my boy on his bike with the mask on with the Rocky Mountains in the background over the lake and stuff. And I sent that to my mom and she wrote back like, oh, that's amazing. I'm so glad you guys got up to watch the sun and he's enjoying that, um, the sunrise and that he's enjoying that. But I'm so sad to see you guys out in mass. Like, what, what is the state of the world? And I wrote back, I said, yeah, but mom, you know what? We had the most amazing conversation this morning about adaptation and how important that is in our own minds and how that is an approach and that is a mindset. And it, you can choose. Like, that is within our control, well within our control. One of the few things right now in our external environment, you know, that, that we can control is our outward and our inward reaction to the circumstances and the situation. And in having that conversation with my son and then by chance, my mom over text, it helped me remember that and put that back into like, you know, my own kind of inspirational inner dialogue that I need. So it was a, it was a learning conversation with my son, kind of a pep talk with my mom, which turned, or, or, you know, like a, I guess, yeah, kind of a pep talk with my mom. And it turned into a pep talk for me, myself, yeah. because we absorb that stuff as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's all, the, all that stuff together. There's so many, we can't do anything about where we're at right now with the whole, you know, globally, um, other than be safe and do what we can to help flatten the curve, right? And, and those types of things. But we can't undo what has already occurred, but we can choose now in the moment, every day, every minute, how we're going to react to it and what we're going to put out. What we put out can either be toxic to other people and ourselves, or it can be inspiring and empowering and, and um, you know, not, not BS in the sense of like, oh, everything's going to be fine. We don't know, <laughs> but we can still be right here and we do have right now, and, and we can make that empowering and inspiring to bring everybody here with us and weather the storm together. Yeah, so. that's beautifully said, Megan. I, I think that's Thanks. a beautiful closing note. I mean, I, I'd love to keep talking, but... I know, I could talk for you, <laughs> with you forever. <laughs> I know, I know, but we'll have to do it again soon sometime. Um, Absolutely. And where can our audience find you online? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm very so uh, active on social media <laughs> and I am going to be, it's um, at Megan Haney Greer spelled M E H G A N H E A N E Y G R I E R. And uh, yeah, I should pop up as soon as you put in M E H because it's an unusual spelling for Megan. Uh, and then also I'm on, I'm very active on Instagram. I do stories almost every day and also on Facebook and uh, I have a Twitter account as well, but definitely most active on Instagram. And then also I have a, a video blog coming up that I'll be launching within the next month that I'm really excited about and uh, related to conservation and kind of getting us all to that empowered middle ground so we can, we can keep moving forward in every which way uh, for 
ourselves, for the environment, the planet, the future, and all of those things wrapped together. So, uh, yeah, so that's where you can find me online and definitely reach out. I, I get back to people and love connecting in that way, especially now because it's so important to connect. So, Thank you. And I can say Megan's awesome online. I actually connected with Megan on Instagram, believe it or not. She's absolutely wonderful and keeping up with her stories are very inspiring for me as well. Just your whole perspective. And I'm so excited about that YouTube series um, as well. So thank you so much for your time, Megan. And for you guys watching, um, we're all thinking about you. We're all thinking about each other right now. Absolutely. Um, And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Madison. Thank you, everybody, for hanging (laughs) out with us.